Hey, Emerald Lagasse here, and tonight on Emerald Live, I'll be joined by one of the great masters, Chef Jacques Pepin. Together we'll be making an unbelievable charcuterie with truffle sausage and a roasted vegetable terrine with French ham. Luscious lobster two ways, and for dessert, it's all about fruit tots with apples and berries. Hey, you don't want to miss this magnificent meal. I'm cooking with Jacques right here on Emerald Live. Welcome to Emerald Live. Hey, folks, tonight, really big show for you tonight. We're going to be making a meal that you will, I guarantee you, you will remember. It's unbelievable. Speaking about unbelievable, give it up for Doc Gibbs and the Emerald Live. <laughs> Yeah, let me tell you what's going on tonight. <laughs> Folks, I got to tell you, this man needs little introduction. I'll tell you that. He is uh, one of the most widely known and well-respected chefs in the world. An incredible man. Uh, he's written over 20 cookbooks and is currently starring in his uh, 10th PBS cooking series. Uh, writes a monthly column for Food & Wine magazine. Uh, does a little bit of work called uh, The Dean at the French Culinary Institute. He's an amazing, amazing guy. What's amazing, he's just written this new book that's called Chez Jacques. Beautiful book. Uh, and it's really sort of a little journey of traditions and rituals of a cook. And uh, we'll get into a little bit more uh, with Jacques about the new book. But folks, put your hands together for Chef Jacques Pepin, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Stuff. Only good, good stuff, stuff here. Good stuff. So yes. I just I have to I, I have to ask you. I uh, yes. the book is absolutely phenomenal. Thank you. Um, the photographs. I know a lot of your your paintings, the recipes. Right. Was there a particular inspiration that uh, that made you write the book? Well, uh, yes. From my mother to my aunt to uh, my wife to my daughter Great. to my friend like you. You know, it's the ritual tradition. You know, of a cook, as I said. So it's. It's a bit uh, visual autobiography, if you want. I, I wrote that book called The Apprentice, which was a cook story. And this is kind of more visual. I've never done a um, coffee table book, you know, which is a lifestyle type of thing. It's fantastic. We play bull, I go frogging, we go uh, picking up mushroom, you know, all that stuff. It's really fantastic. Congratulations. Yeah, look at those mushrooms. That's right. Thank you. Delighted for you to be here, Chef. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. All right. Here's a... Here's how we're going to work it tonight. Uh, Jacques is uh, going to take this station over here, and okay. uh, he's going to he's going to work on uh, some recipes from the book and some inspirations from himself on that side there. I believe he's going to show us how to make a sausage, and uh, I'm going to work on this side here, and we're just going to kind of go back and forth and uh, and have a good time. So, what are you so. making? Well, I'm making a, a truffle and a pistachio sausage. I mean, look at all the sausage you have here. Beautiful. And, uh, but I want to show you how to make it at home, you know, uh, just by poaching it. And the, 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 the big secret is really poaching it very slowly for a long time. Okay. You know? So uh, that's it. I okay. have enough for two sausage. I have two pounds of, uh, of ground pork here, about 20% fat, 22%. Okay. 22 I think I'm going to put a bit of garlic in there. Mm -hmm. So... So, uh, oh, maybe two cloves, right? 
So, what do I do? Am I supposed to bam this into this? No, no, no. no, no. no. It's way too early for that <laughs> oh, yet. Yeah, yeah, well, okay. During the break, we got to get us a little wine, and then we'll stop bamming here in a little bit. Sounds there, good. Sean. Sounds good. Pistachio. A pistachio. I have a salt. This is a curing salt, you know, and pepper in it. Then truffle, which are a very expensive type of mushroom. You may put truffle, or if you don't, if you can afford it, then you put some mushroom in it or something else. But uh, if you're on a good show like this, they supply you with good truffle. You know, so. Big budget here, John. Yeah, big, big, budget, big budget. I see that. We yes. even have air conditioning. Oh, my God. So truffle in there, and that's it. I mean, uh, you have to let it cure for like three days before you... Uh, so it's nice and pink inside, you know. So I'm going to mix that and make two sausage out of it. Jacques, if, if people didn't have curing salt... Or, you know, not that they can, you can find it anywhere, basically. Yeah, you find it on the internet, you but Morton. You why, what is, uh, what's, what, what, what's the significance of using the curing salt for the average person to well, know? Actually, uh, it is 99% salt when you buy it, and half of 1% of potassium nitrate, half of 1% sodium nitrate, and that's what makes things pink, like, uh, you know, from a pate to ham to... Uh, hot dog and all that, there is that type of curing salt in it. Some people say it's no good for you, but look, uh, it was used by the Egyptian 2,000 years before Christ. Right. It's always been used and... They're still alive. They're still alive, <laughs> yeah. You know. And who wants to die in good health anyway? <laughs> exactly. So... I'm a, you know, I'm going to make in your honor a little terrine. Oh, that sounds good. With vegetables. So I'm going to roll my, uh, my uh, sausage here. That's it in there, so half, about a pound of meat, as I say, each, so that should be fine. So, you know, this is a nice way of doing it. You don't need the casing, otherwise you have to stuff it into the casing. And uh, so like this, it's much easier to do. And, uh, and good to wrap like that to poach, like yes, you said. Ro ro to poach it this way, you know, I want to do it pretty tight so that there is no air bubble inside. Mm -hmm. And I put that in a little piece of uh, aluminum foil, and then we, uh, we use, you poach it directly in there, you know, like and this. Any particular uh, stock that you want to poach it in, Jacques? No, or? no, just water. Just water. Yeah, you okay. just put water in there because you want it at low temperature, like 150, 160 degrees for an hour, very slowly. That's what makes it moist, you Perfect. know. Perfect. I'm gonna brush my vegetables that I've cut in about a third of an inch. Zucchini, eggplant, yellow squash with olive oil in a little time. And, uh, and then I have a little filling here with uh, some, uh, some, just some simple cheese. Uh, you could use ricotta or goat cheese. This is a chev that I'm going to add a little chervil and parsley to. And when Jock and I come back, we will uh, get the charcuterie party together. Stick around. Doc yeah. Gibbs! <laughs> dishes tonight. How about a little love for Chef Jacques Pepin? Oh, yeah. ah. All right. I want to do a coffee thing for me. Yes, you have to. You have to have a little sauce right? I'm going to add a little olive oil to this cheese now, just uh -huh. to give it a little, and uh, a little salt. Mm -hmm. and not too much salt, just a little bit. Some fresh pepper. Mm -hmm. And you are sausages poaching, huh? Well, I'm going to poach it now. You are. So you put that into uh, 160 degree water, you know, quite low actually, but you push it for like one hour to make sure that it stay underneath. You put a lid on top and it apply and just look at your water. The point is that if you push it at low temperature, it's still really moist and nice when you cut it. If you go higher, it dries out. So those are cooked here. So I'm going to uh, open this. Boy. And uh, serve that with a potato salad, you know. 
see, look at those were poached like three days and they are nice, beautifully red, you know. I'm gonna do one. And then plastic wrap. Good job here. Looking good over there. All right, look, it's great. I got a little ham that I'm sort of lining my terrine with. Oh, yeah? And then some salami. Look at that. And a little bit of... Oh, yeah. I have, I have a fingerling potato here, a little bit of melted butter, a lot of chives. We'll put a dash of salt in it. That's salt, yes. Good. <laughs> Pepper. <laughs> And basically, that's it, you know. Just the way my mother used to make. The potato underneath. You know, lukewarm potato like this. And those are, as I say, those fingerling potato, which are... One of my favorite dishes. Beautiful, are. aren't they? Oh, oh, that's that's edge, beautiful. Know? You want look at the here? texture of that. That's absolutely... Look at the beautiful texture. The truffle in there. Oh, boy. Truffle, pistachio. Oh, that's a good vegetable, huh? Oh. Anything I like, I call a vegetable for that. <laughs> People say, eat your vegetables. Say, yeah, this is a good vegetable. Excellent vegetable. Yeah. Okay, now, so you present it just like that, lukewarm, you know. And that's it. That's delicious. I'm so going to walk. in the restaurant, 12 bucks a portion. <laughs> At least. Yeah. Jack, I'm going to come over here now, and you see I've lined my... Wow, this is beautiful. So my, you have, my you have little the ham mold. outside. This is beautiful the, the ham. ham. Yeah. Yep. See the boiled ham. And then... Um, really nice. Yes. Then we're going to take the vegetable that we roasted lightly. So you put them in the oven, just salt, just pepper. Just salt, pepper, a little thyme. Little. And then we're going to put a little bit of roasted pepper. Wow. And uh, that we peeled off. Very good. Off okay. Food. Now... Ah, now the mix. Now the, the glue. Now the glue. <laughs> which is the cheese with the chervil. And the parsley, I put a little olive oil in there. That's great, you. And then, what we're going to do... You put more stuff on top. Put more stuff on top. So, we go with the reversed again, this way with the pepper. That's good. And the pepper there. Did you do that at the Commander's Palace? No, I, um, I did this uh, several years ago. Um, it just became a very interesting dish during the, uh -huh. the spring and summer when yeah. all of the vegetables are plentiful. Oh, yeah, yeah. And so you want to... And you can do that a couple of days ahead, right? Exactly. Then that's the other great thing about it, as you know. You uh, Now, basically what we're going to do is take the salami on top like this to sort of... This is nice salami from uh, around here. Yes. Boy, this... And then... Then you fold We're going to fold it over. And then what you use now is I use a little press. Piece of cardboard yep. with, uh, with aluminum, aluminum foil. foil. And then the key is to have a brick. Because uh -huh. you have, no, you have to weight it. See? You have to weight it now as... But as you don't eat the brick, No, right? No. Okay, well. the, the brick is not for dessert. No, that's what mine. <laughs> <laughs> so then... As chef says, you have to go in the refrigerator at least at least eight hours uh, or longer. The great thing, if you're going to do this a couple of days in advance, you can wrap the whole thing in plastic wrap to uh, to keep it just sort of real nice and fresh. And then the idea is to get it room temperature, and then the key, of course, is to is to get it out. Okay. Good. Now. Here. I like to uh, to serve sharp knife, very important. That piece. Oh, look at that. Okay. Beautiful, huh? Nice, beautiful color. And uh, the ham and the salami just... Mix into it. Yes. And then what I do is I love to serve this with a little bit of sun-dried tomatoes. And uh, just sort of brew it in a food processor with a little olive oil as the sauce. Test it. Absolutely. 
And it's that simple. And a wonderful, wonderful appetizer. Can I steal that recipe? Yes, you can. Anytime you want. Anytime you want. Good. Now, when Jacques and I come back, he's going to do a variation, very classic, of a wonderful dish with lobster. And I'm going to do something a little bit more uh, traditional. Stick around. We'll be right back with lobster. Jacques <laughs> My very good friend, Chef Jacques Pepin, in the house. Hot off the press, an amazing, amazing book by Chef Jacques, Traditions and Rituals of a Cook. But uh, if you can uh, just see the photographs uh, of his paintings and the dishes and the whole life story, there's, the, uh, there's that truffle sausage that we just, uh, just made. And... Uh, there's somewhere out there. You you have it. And and Amazing. It's not bad, isn't it? See that? You you can get two books now. Yeah. Exactly. That's the, um what do you make? Whoa, 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 whoa. Cheers. Lobster, lobster, cheers. People, people already ask me, do you cook with wine? I say, yeah, I cook with wine. All the time. Yeah. <laughs> Chef, what are you making now? I push a lobster here. Yeah. Push a lobster a few minutes. You know, let it cool up so it's barely cooked. So I have the flesh here. On top of the flesh, we're going to put melted butter and then keep it warm into the, uh, the oven to serve it later with a souffle on top. Now you take the shell here, olive oil, put the shell in there and brown it. And you really have to brown it quite a lot, like 15, 20 minutes or so to get here. And now that it's nicely browned, we put some cognac in it. Ooh. Cooking, a bit of white wine. Then we have the onion, carrot, onion, celery, tomato in there, garlic. So you're making we a little of this, uh, like and an you cook American that, sauce. Yeah, exactly. So some can. We cook that like 20, 30 minutes, and then you strain it, like we have it strained here. Several time, and then I'm going to thicken it a little bit. This is the end of the sauce, you know. That okay. process is fine. So I'll thicken it with a little bit of uh, arrowroot mixed with water, and then I'll go and help you. Okay. Oh. So here we put that in there. I have a whisk, I think, somewhere here. And this is the base sauce for the souffle. You know, that's a reduction of all that juice, and we put, of course, a little bit of cream in there, and some chopped tarragon. Mm. And that's it. Then we'll go on to do the souffle later. Okay. So, I have some sweet, sweet potatoes, potatoes that I'm going to grill uh, right. in little slices like that. And, of course, I also have a lobster that just Ooh. poached a little bit. So we're going to take that out. We reserve the shell and the body. You can see that it's not 100% uh -huh. uh, cooked. Yeah, that's the way I cooked mine also. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to just sort of take a half a tail... And uh, see, it's still a little bit, about halfway cooked, as you know, chef. So we're going to season that and also put that on the grill. Oh, well, that's great. And then we're going to grill them. Then what I have here is some lima beans and fresh okra. Yeah. Uh, some corn, a couple of heads that uh, I grilled. And then took the, uh, the corn off the, uh, off the cob, tomatoes, and I'm going to make a little succotash. Ooh. But you won't see that until Jacques and I come back. So stick around. Thank we'll you. be right back, folks. Stop here.
if you just joined us, Emma Lagasse here, and I'm cooking with Chef Jacques Pepin. Yeah. We got a couple serious dishes right now, particularly the one that Jacques is working on, because uh, it's one of those classic dishes, a lobster souffle. And um, I'm going to have him explain where he's at right here. He started with a little butter. Yep, about and... three tablespoons of butter, three tablespoons of flour, and a cup and a half, cup and a quarter of milk. We do a classic bechamel, put four egg yolk in it, and that will be the base of the souffle with the cheese, and then we're going to beat the egg white. So here it is. This is easy and classic. We're going to put cheese in it, Swiss cheese as well as Parmesan cheese on top. First, I'm going to beat the white. Okay, so you start fast to break the egg white. Then you go slowly to lift it up. And uh, it shouldn't take you more than like a minute or so to get your white to the right uh, texture. And then we mix it with the bechamel. Okay. So you're grilling away there. Yes, I'm grilling away. Um, I thought I would just kind of stay on the grill over here, except for my sucker cash. I uh, got the okra fresh. And uh, just uh, in a sort of just a little olive oil brought the okra out, delicious Good. and uh, fresh. And then I added the grilled corn. Now uh, to that, a little butter, and I'm going to add these beautiful little uh, cherry tomatoes, which Ew. taste just so delicious. And also uh, a little bit of the lima beans uh, for my succotash. Um, and that's where I am right now here. Okay. So maybe you can help me. Yes. All right. A little salt. So what we need now, I give you about a third of the egg white to put in the bechamel. Yes. And you can mix it in. Yes. With the whisk that will lighten the souffle, you know. Okay. And then after you put all that back in there with the Swiss cheese. Beautiful. <laughs> Are you messing up my No, 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 no. Okay, good. <laughs> the pot is very small, oh, right. Okay, so that goes back in there. That's good. Good. And then now you fold it with the, the, the spatula. That's good. Okay. With the rest of the egg white. I have the sweet sheet in there. So that's good. And I have a, a gratin dish here that I, uh, I put butter and parmesan cheese in it. Right there. And that will be our souffle. Now, as everybody knows, dish. one of the... Risky things, either savory, which Jacques is making, or sweet, is it's all about the timing when it comes to souffles. Yes. And uh, you can't be in there shaking up the oven and disturbing it. You just got to kind of let it be. That looks fantastic right there, Parmesan Jacques. cheese on top. We straighten this out, mark it a little bit, mm -hmm. and that's it. Now I have one in the oven. I hope it didn't collapse. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to go get it. I have total faith in you. Oh, look at that. I have total faith in you. Nice to play. Look how beautiful that is, huh? Yeah. And I have the lobster meat that we cooked, you know, that we warm up in butter slowly in the oven. Yeah. This is a very expensive and elegant dish, then remember the reduction of the stock, the reduction of the stock, then I thicken it a little bit, a bit of cream, finally a dash of cognac at the end, and that's about it. Now I need a spoon to serve it. Here. Uh, thank you. You're welcome. So there you would want to put a little bit of the sauce in the bottom, yes. So delicious and lobster you, sauce in the bottom. And see, th those are not overcooked this way, so ah. the, the lobster is... Uh, Really nice, so like half a lobster per person like this. You know, maybe a little more sauce. Oh. I give some space in the center for my souffle. You need another spoon? And we do... T oh, can you use this one? Look here? at this. Oh. So we put oh. the souffle in the center here. Maybe a little slice of truffle. Oh, la la. Voilà, monsieur. How are oh, you? that's fantastic. And okay, you put, put a little truffle on the top. A little, yeah, we can charge 10 bucks more with that. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Yeah. We, um, we are going to now put our lobster tails to finish. Now, you know, Jacques, what I'm going to do, uh, I don't want to spoil that uh, souffle. I want to get to serve it with you. 
But what I'm going to do is I'm not going to add any uh, any uh, sort of cream. I had a little bit of the butter. Uh -huh. What I'm going to do is uh, in the in the succotash, I'm just going to uh, add a little bit uh, of uh, avocado. Okay. Yeah. Uh, just to sort of uh, thicken this a little bit, so uh -huh. I just gonna dice it a little bit like this. And you emulsify it. Yeah. It? And oh, then good. what I'm gonna do? That's a good idea. Yeah, I'm gonna do this uh, with a spoon now, and come, and begin as the avocado begins to start getting warm. As you know, it's gonna uh, it's gonna start to thicken that. And then my lobsters now are on the grill and they're getting cooked. And when Jacques and I come back, I'm gonna finish mine. And then, wait till you see what we got up our sleeves for dessert. Stick around. We'll be right back. Hey, hey, if you're just joining us, shame on you. We got a little lobster souffle with the sauce American that Jacques had just did right out of his new book, Chez Jacques, The uh, Traditions and Rituals of a Cook. Yeah, I mean, the lobster souffle was at the Plaza Athen in Paris. Very classic. Unbelievable. But then on the other hand, I have fried chicken, southern style, as well as clam chowder, which represent the time I spent at Howard Johnson. I know, love so. it. I love it. So I'm little... not kidding, I worked 10 years for Howard Johnson. Very, From 1960 very... to 1970, I was the director of research. So you like the fried clam at Howard Johnson. We <laughs> made it. <so. laughs> All right, my, uh, right. my dish is going to finish now. Looks Don't want to overcook. So now the succotash is ready. I took the sweet potatoes off. Uh -huh. And what we're going to do is just add that succotash right here. And then what we're going to do is now is we're going to take our lobster tail... Great. And then, you know, Jacques, we're going to just do a very, very simple, uh, a very simple sauce, you know. In, in New Orleans, uh, we do a lot with, uh, with sort of with lemon butter. Oh, yes. And so what we're going to do real quickly, we're going to take a little bit of that tarragon. fresh tarragon. That's what I forget to put in my souffle. <laughs> <laughs> what about the good tarragon? <laughs> we're going to just uh, rough chop this quickly. And uh, then what we're going to do is I have a little clarified butter on the stove. Okay, what can I do for you? So we got it. So Are we're going to add there? right inside there. Well, now we're yeah. going to turn the heat up. And then what we're going to do is we're going to add the zest oh, of lemon. Of lemon. Oh, that's good. And the juice of the lemon. Okay. And then basically now what we're going to do, Jacques, is just take a little bit of that. How's it mm. taste? Now then a dish of salt. A little salt. I hope it's not sugar. No, it's so no, no. <laughs> and then what we're going to do is we're just going to come now right, and take a it. little bit on the lobster tail. The last touch. The last little touch like that. And uh, you have a delicious lobster souffle. How is that, guys? It yes, is sir. unbelievable, isn't it? Amazing. Yeah. And uh, we're going to serve this in a little bit because now what we're going to do is uh, it's time to go to dessert. Oh! Okay. I have about a cup and a quarter of uh, flour here and eight tablespoons of butter. You know, a dash of salt, a dash of uh, salt and a dash of sugar. And then you want to break it together. I mean, the secret of that dough is so that you want to see large pieces of butter still in the dough. And that will melt as the dough is rolled and you'll see it in the dough. And that will give you the flakiness of a puff paste, you know. So it's a kind of rough dough. You just break it like that and you have, little, I mean, a lot of pieces of... Uh, of butter than water in there. I mix it to it very fast, and I work it so fast that you can roll it right away. I don't really have to wait. See, I mix it just enough to make it gather together, and uh, maybe a little more water there. You know, your water will change depending on the, on the type of moisture that you have in the flour, you know? Okay, here I have my dough. That for an apple galette, just like my mother used to do. Or my aunt, rather. Okay, I gather it together. 
And that's it. So I can see that I have large pieces of butter in there. And in that butter, as I said, we're going to roll it right away. A very rough dough. Take a little bit of flour to clean up my hand. Not good, huh? Oh, boy. Mm, pure vanilla extract. I yeah. have a little bit of vanilla it's that's going to go inside of this cream. And uh, scrape the inside out. That's where all the little pods of the vanilla are. Going to sweeten it with uh, just a little bit of sugar. And we're going to make just sort of an old-fashioned pastry cream uh, for a little tot that we're going to do. That was the juice of uh, about a half an orange and the zest of an orange. And now I turn it back over to you, Jacques. Okay. Well, look look at the dough here. I think this one, the, the important part of it, those pieces of butter that you can see right through it, you know. And that's what will make the dough. So there... Roll it as thin as you can, you know, for my cup and a half of, a, of a flour. Put it back on your rolling pin. And then we put it on that sealed pad, which is a thing that nothing stick to. That's great, you know. And on top of this now, we do a frangipane, we call it. And the frangipane is made with, uh, with uh, roasted uh, hazelnut that I have here. And uh, I'm going to put it in there. I love roasted hazelnut. One egg, sugar, a dash of vanilla. That's it. Sugar, yes. <laughs> Always taste. Okay. And then we put it together, and that's it. I'm going to spread it on top of that later. And after that, we'll put apple on top. Okay. okay. I have four egg yolks uh -huh. that I have um, with about uh, four tablespoons of cornstarch, which is going to thicken this. And then now what I want to do is I want to temper the egg yolks. So I'm adding a little bit of the hot cream mixture that has the vanilla and the zest in it. Um, and then you'll see that I'm going to just sort of whisk this together. And this is called tempering, uh, so we don't really scramble the eggs. And, uh, and then what we're going to do is when that's incorporated as it is now, we're going to put that back inside here. Creme pâtissier, right? Yes. Cream, right? And uh, then this is going to uh, cook for about three or four minutes and it's going to get very, very thick. Uh, at that point when it gets thick, um, what you want to do is you're going to take it uh, and put it inside of a bowl. And um, because it's an old-fashioned pastry cream, uh, you want to cover it. Uh, with a little plastic so it doesn't really form uh, sort of a, a skin or, you know, uh, so that's what I have the plastic for, and you let it cool down. The vanilla bean, I wash, believe it or not, dry it, and then I'll use it, I'll put it in uh, a container of sugar, and then I have sort of vanilla sugar, uh, because it's, uh, you know, you can do that, it's, yeah. and it's very expensive. I do that at home, too. And when it's really dry, I break it into pieces, put it into a small coffee grinder with sugar and make a powder out of it. It's beautiful. You put it in a cream, it's good. Absolutely. So that's what uh, I'm, I'm good here. What I'm going to do is I have a, uh, already a pre-baked uh, shell of an almond crust that I made, uh, baked for about 12 minutes. And I'm going to add the pastry cream now inside of this tot. Mm -hmm. And Jock's about ready to put some apples on his dessert. And when he and I come back, it will be dessert time. Stick around. We'll be right back. Jock Kids! <laughs> You know what? This, you know, this reminds me um, country. Yes. Very yes. rustic. This is a galette, you know. We call it a galette, which we used to do when we cooked bread, you know. Mm -hmm. In the country oven, the, the heat was still hot. We used to use even bread dough, spread it out, and put whatever fruit was in season. Mm. So, you know, you cut it this way, and we only keep 
the, the knife slice from the center. And what you do with this, you sharp it to put it in the bottom of the pan. So all your slices are equal on top, you know. Mm -hmm. And what uh, I have here is the frangipane that we did, that picture of hazelnut, you know, that we did there. Right. And oh, you so put that's that going on, top. on the bottom, right yeah. on the frangipane. Oh yes, we don't throw anything out. That's my delicious. Gosh. Yes. And any particular apple at home you uh, you want to tell well, the you folks know, to use? From golden, from golden to pippin. Yeah. Or pippin. No, pippin. I think yeah. it's pippin. Yeah. I think so, it's pippin. And. Uh, and uh, no, those are russet. I love russet if you can find them. What you do, you put that like the tile of a roof, you know, you, you stagger it like this, mm -hmm. you know, all around. And what we are going to do after that is to bring the side of the dough back on the apple in a very simple, uh, simple way. Mm -hmm. And uh, butter and sugar on top and up in the oven for like at least an hour. You want it really crusty. Mm -hmm. And in France, Particularly, we don't really put cinnamon or uh, nutmeg or whatever with the apple. I mean, just butter and sugar. Right. You know, so it's, it's a different taste. But, I mean, if you like your uh, apple pie with uh, nutmeg, go ahead. It's yours. Right. You can do whatever you want. Exactly. You know, so. <laughs> that looks so fantastic. So here it is. So now we bring back the side on top of it like this, you know. Make it really. So you're bringing that, you're flipping that right back. Exactly. So you, know, you, you don't have anything uh, lost. I mean, you don't, uh, uh, you don't have any trimming left or whatever. The dough is a bit soft now, but it's okay. You know, and I'm, on top of that, sugar, I'm really impressed uh, with the, these seal pats. Oh yeah, oh, it's incredible. Are you kidding? You saw Charge seal my life. Pats that, uh, and then butter on top. Can I borrow some butter from sure, you? Sure, sure. Okay. Butter and that you put that in the oven for little, an hour. Uh, a little whiskey, but and yeah. basically. Uh, you want it melted? You ready? No, no, no. Just put it. Is that enough? Of oh, that's good. That's good. Okay, that should be enough. Yeah. <laughs> A couple of tablespoons of butter, and basically that's what I have here with the sugar. It's beautiful. So, sure. this will transfer it to a, to a board like this. You know, it should be pretty dry. So that's that's like, like one hour. What you said, you want it. Yeah, a good you hour. You want it to get really good, really crispy. You'll see when I cut it. And then here I have some apricot, apricot jam, a little bit of Calvados in it. Calvados is apple jack, basically. You know. So oh, go ahead. We got a big okay. budget here. Go ahead. Just, don't worry. We we'll give you a straw if you want here on this show. Okay. And then you want to put some of that on top of it, usually with a spoon, and you follow the design of the thing like this, you know, you uh -huh. just uh, drag it a little bit like this. You know, Jacques, I got to tell you, you know, Doc, you know, Doc over there, Doc Gibbs? Yes, yes. He is like the biggest sweet freak that I know. Oh, no kidding. So, look, he can't really see him, but he's drooling all over his shirt over oh, yeah. there right now. It's unbelievable. I got a little apricot in here, too, and then I'm going to put a little brandy, okay, just a Ooh. little bit there. And I'm going to just put that a little simmer heat. That's it's absolutely man, beautiful, oven. Jacques. And uh, what I'm going to do is I got sliced strawberries, and the outside of my pastry cream, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start just kind of lining up the strawberries on the outside. Jacques, just yell if you need anything over there. Okay. And, uh, and I'm going to go around and uh, try to, in the same design, I'm cutting uh, as this. the berries this cut. Really? Right, I want to show you the... Look at the, the bottom of this, you know, the... the Beautiful. It's like a puff paste, you know, yep. that's that a very, very... One, two, three, four... <laughs> I've cut that in really small pieces, huh? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, you know, you do a buffet. Those are really the big galette like this. I do that with, uh, with uh, rhubarb. I do that with plum. I do that... And if you do anything which leak a lot, like cherries or rhubarb, then in the bottom of it, you can do the frangipane as I did, or you do a mixture of sugar, sugar, nuts, and the flour in equal proportion. That is, you put like, you know, a third of a cup of sugar, a third of a cup of flour, nuts, you do a powder, you put it in the bottom, that will absorb the juice in like plum or uh, mm. cherry or stuff like this. Here we are. Oh, that's beautiful. Now I can help you. That's perfect. <laughs> now, so uh, we've got the strawberries, whatever kind of design you like. But then I generally leave the center like this for a little bit of blueberries to go around. Ah, yes. And just a very simple uh, fruit tart with, with the pastry cream that we made. And then, as you know, uh -huh. uh, with the brush, uh, we are going to then brush the fruit, brush the fruit. Uh, to get a nice, a nice glaze. Again, 
folks, whatever's in season, you can use peaches, you can use all different kinds, even apples. This little brandy and apricot is going to give it a nice glaze. Oh, yeah. And then you need to, uh, to let it sit a little bit. Uh, not only, people think that we do this because we're trying to make the fruit shine. And basically what it is is to, uh, to keep the fruit intact on the top uh, and also so it doesn't turn uh, when it... Uh, it doesn't discolor. Exactly, yes. discolor uh, with the pastry cream. We should uh, let that sit. And the great thing that uh, you do ahead of time is the reason why I use the pan that I did is because you want to be able to simply, and Jacques who's going to help me here, okay. simply lift... We, we, oh, yeah, that's right. Beautiful. <laughs> You okay. got it? Yes. See, ah! and I'm, oh, no, I'm <laughs> Just kidding. Just kidding. And so, yeah. We got that. And so uh, we just take a little, a little piece like this here, and uh, a little piece like this. Uh, you have a plate for me, my friend? And oh, see, yeah. it's very fragile. It needs to sit up a little bit. Yeah, the dough in a, in a beautiful uh, no. kind of cookie dough, right? Here, the, the, here's the thing. The thing is that you want to be able to make some friends. So you, you can make friends easily with, wow. with a tot like that. Or we're going to make friends like that. But first, speaking about friends, I want to thank my friend Jacques Pepin for stopping by his thank brand you. new book, <laughs> Chef Jacques, Tradition Rituals of a Cook. Fantastic. Available now. He's Jacques Pepin. I'm Emma Lagasse. We'll see you next time, ladies and gentlemen.